Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're not. It's your girl, Miss K. If this is your first time coming across my channel, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe if you like the vibe and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload more videos like this one. Today, guys, we're going to be going over the latest episode of P-Valley, season two, episode five, called White Nights. Now, this episode was very good to me, guys, but it really did have me emotional at some parts, all right? But let's get into this, okay? So the episode starts off with Uncle Clifford narrating the story of Keyshawn Harris and how she became Mississippi. Now, I love the way that they laid this episode out with Uncle Clifford telling us a story like it was a fairy tale, you know? I was here for that. So we get to Keyshawn's big night where she's going to be dancing at this club in front of chicks like Jessica Dime and Miami Tip, you know? And she was presented by none other than Jocelyn Hernandez, baby, okay? But before that, Rome tells Keyshawn that she's about to have her own lace front line. But we're going to get back to how that all went a little later. So, of course, Keyshawn is all excited about that. And she thinks she's about to be raking in a dough, honey, okay? But anyway, she goes on stage and she does her thing. And she meets with Jocelyn. And Jocelyn drops some jewels on her and everything. And tells her that you're going to always be looked at as a whole. Like, these people are not going to let you forget it, you know. But she's just basically letting her know that, in so many words, in a Jocelyn way, you know, keep that bad B energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, always remember you're a bad chick. So, anyway, now we're going to go back to where it all started for Keyshawn and her literal white knight, Derek, okay. We get a flashback where we see Keyshawn trying out for the cheerleading squad. And Gidget is the captain, guys. But Keyshawn fails miserably and she doesn't make the team. But her fair-skinned stepsister sure does. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we see that Derek and his corny behind stepped in and tried to defend Keyshawn when a black football player was trying to play her. I mean, the stuff he was saying made no sense. You know, I think he was trying to say that she looked burned. All this kind of stupidness, right? It was just, this fool was just saying dumb things because I feel like Keyshawn is very pretty. And in my opinion, she was prettier than both her stepsisters as well. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Y'all know what happens. Derek tries to walk away from the football player, but the dude spits on him and Derek had to whip his behind and his friends too, all right? Now, the sad thing is that the black boys got suspended, but Derek got no punishment at all. Mm -hmm. And Keyshawn even said something to Derek about it. She was like, you didn't get a punishment even though you started it, you know? And that's when Derek tells her that they need to make sure that he stays in school because they want to win those nationals, all right? Anyway, guys, so we come to find out that Keyshawn's daddy is paid, all right? But she's treated like a black Cinderella in that big old house that she lived in. And she had to suffer a superficial stepmother who was all about hair and looks. And uh, she had Keyshawn doing the girl's hair and makeup, okay? We also find out that Derek came from money, too. So, of course, his family disowned him after he got, like, Keyshawn pregnant and stuff because there's no freaking reason, guys, for Keyshawn and Derek to be living where they live now, all right? Especially when he comes from money like that. But who would have guessed it, right, guys, that Derek or Keyshawn came from these kind of backgrounds? And even though we're living in this day and age, their relationship was still, like, forbidden, you know? We even had Derek, who was going to get a full ride to college and everything, guys, you know. But, hey, he wanted him some Keyshawn, and that didn't stop him from popping up unannounced and ready to take Keyshawn to the Cracker Ball. And, look, this was a ball that he knew his mother was going to be at because she was a part of the committee or something like that, you know. Anywho, guys, even though I don't like Derek, I thought it was a nice moment for Keyshawn because she was just standing around taking pictures of her daddy's new family, you know. But things ain't all honky-dory over there with them either because look how he looks at Keyshawn's older stepsister. You know, he, he kind of had his hand on her inappropriately and you could tell that she was uncomfortable as well. So it was looking like he's probably either been touching her or he's doing some inappropriate things with her, guys. I don't know, but it's very disgusting. There's a lot going on in that house, all right? Anyway, so... I believe that because Derek was Keyshawn's fake Prince Charming back in the day, it makes it harder for her to walk away from him because she's like still holding on to those moments when he was showing her the attention and kindness that the other dudes weren't, especially black guys, you know, she couldn't even get no love from her own people, you know, but she unfortunately comes to find out that Derek, he didn't only come from money, but he comes from an abusive father which Derek himself has become toward her 
and we later find out towards the kids also right we're going to talk about that later so let's go back into the present where we see that Murda and Teak and uh, Wody and Keyshawn are laughing and joking and they're celebrating her after her big night was a success and you know she got all this money on the floor and Wody winks at her and she collapses and does her little fake death okay then she wakes up and she makes a little money angel instead of a snow angel <laughs> then rome comes through the door and he lets them know that they're gonna slide through jocelyn's party you know get that money together we're gonna slide through jocelyn's party and the guys thought that they were supposed to be going too but rome had to pop their bubble and he was like mm, i done done enough for y'all y'all should be happy that i even got y'all these daggone rooms and of course, you know, Teak had to say something about it. Like, we don't need your charity. And I think he threw like the room key card at him or something like that. And him and Rome was going at it a little bit. And Rome calls him an ungrateful broke ninja and all of this stuff. It made references to how he wants a hard cot because he's a jailbird and all of this, guys, right? Not going to get into all of that. But I do like the part where Murder and Teak was kind of going at it. And Keyshawn gave Bodhi a look like, are these ninjas growing, you know? <laughs> and he gave her a look right back and was like, yeah, I think these ninjas is growing okay <laughs> that was pretty funny to me guys but then Wody and Keyshawn were alone and he straight up told her that he did not like her hair and she was like what <laughs> but the part that did it for me was when Uncle Clifford who was narrating was like oh <laughs> that was funny to me all right but Wody you know he didn't mean no harm he was just trying to let her know that he liked the hair that grows out of her head in other words he likes the natural side of her okay next Keyshawn gets to Rome's hotel suite and he tells her that the wig line fell through but he got a shoe deal that she can get with but Keyshawn already knows that them lace fronts is where the money resides where the money resides where the money resides where the money resides okay but you know Rome with his old pimping behind was gonna say whatever he could to convince her all right but anyway things take a turn for the worse when Keyshawn goes to trying her floors to see how it goes with that strip of him and Rome pops up with his robe open, okay? I was like, Rome, what the heck are you doing? Lo and behold, guys, Rome was not looking out for Keyshawn, okay? Of course, we know he wanted to get paid and everything, but this dude wanted to make money off of Keyshawn and get the drawers, all right? So she tries to get away, and he follows her to the room. Like, I ain't taking no for an answer because she was like, you know, I'm, I'm not about this, right? And I was just on edge with this scene, guys, so through because I really thought that he was going to succeed at taking advantage of her. All right, guys. But the one key moment that I almost forgot to mention is that before Rome pushed Keyshawn on the bed, he let her know that he's on to Little Murder and he knows that she's been covering for him. You know, that when she be kissing him and all that stuff, he could tell that Little Murder don't like that. All right. And some way, somehow, guys, Rome was able to record Little Murder and Teak getting it in. And he sure showed Keyshawn that he had the proof after she told Rome that he ain't had no proof. Right. So Keyshawn gets away from this clown and she runs back to her room where the rest of the guys are staying at. And she tells Wody that Rome tried to violate her and he knows everything about Little Murder. So for me, guys, I felt like I already knew that Wardy was going to do something to Rome, okay? Just off the strength that he seemed to be connecting with Keyshawn, you know, he likes her, and he knew that Rome wasn't going to help Little Murder succeed. So not only did this dude violate Shorty, but you trying to play with my money too, you know? But I definitely didn't think that Wardy was going to kill Rome, okay? But that's something that we're going to talk about soon, okay? Let's move on to Keyshawn real quick. So Keyshawn goes back home, guys, and everything seems to be okay at first, but she starts to see that something is wrong with her son, Jalen. All right, so she takes the baby to the hospital and finds out that, you know, he has something normal where, unfortunately, when the parents pull the baby by the arm, you know, instead of picking the baby up by, you know, their body or their waist or whatever, you when you pick up your child by the arm, it can make the, um, the elbow dislocate. And so that's something that's normal but when we start seeing the bruises on the back we already know that there's an abusive situation going on so she goes home and she confronts this dude but my thing was why the heck ain't social services get involved in this because as soon as you start seeing bruises it's a whole case they about to open up you know even if one one parent is not doing the abusing they don't care they're gonna come to see what the heck is going on in that house so the fact that she came back and there was no visit from social services was a very very odd okay so she basically told him listen you can hit me 
all you want, but do not hit my kids. You know, I know that that's what your father taught you, but you're better than him. You know, she first tries to, you know, encourage him and let him know that you don't have to be like your father. Okay. But then once he was like, he about to go on an interview and all of this stuff, she said, you know, you ain't going to get the job. That dude smacked the freaking crap out of her. Her freaking mouth started bleeding and all that. Actually, guys, he punched her in the face after she said, it's okay if you don't get the job because I'll just keep taking care of my three kids, Jalen, Regal, and Derek. And before she could finish saying his last name, he punched her in the face. And that was like what enraged him. He starts pulling her by her hair. Like I was scared for Keyshawn, guys. I thought she was going to die. Honestly, I really did. And to be honest, it, the jury's still out, guys. I do feel like her death is a strong possibility. I hope it doesn't happen, but I do believe it's a strong possibility. She has to get out of this situation, all right? This whole fairy tale narration thing that was going on and the way that Uncle Clifford was narrating it, it says a lot to me. Like, she's either going to have to kill this man to get out of this freaking situation or she is going to get killed, yo. She's going to have to run. From the first time she got choked out, you know, Uncle Clifford said something important in that part. And then here, she, here we go at the end where she getting choked out again. And I was like, oh, shoot, this is it, guys. But it wasn't, thank God. But then when he took that iron up like he was going to burn her face, uh, I almost had tears when she was like, please, no, please, any, anywhere but my face, anywhere but my face. I felt for her. The actress did such a great job on that part. Because I felt it and I wanted to cry. Like, because she's like, no, anywhere. You know, like, she's willing to be abused by this man, which is so, so sad. But she's like, please just don't do my face. Like, that's the money maker. And it, it's just it's sad. It's a, a freaking terrible, sad situation that she's in, guys. Now, before we move on to the last scene where Wody goes and finds Rome, guys. Uncle Clifford was saying something about you know, where are the good fathers? You know, where are good fathers when you need them? And he said, where are the men who love and protect you? And that's when he was like, do they only live in the future? Like, do they even exist? You know? And it was just a really sad narration going on because after she got choked out by Derek that first time, she went back home to her father's house and her stepmother was like, I'm sorry, you can't come in here. I don't want my daughters around this and all of this stuff. And she said, where's my daddy at? Does he say the same thing? Her father was nowhere to be found, you know? And it's like, I understand you're married and everything, but you still have a child and you letting this woman make decisions on your behalf. Like, why couldn't Keyshawn just get on the phone and call her father? Like, what, what the heck is up with that? And that also goes to show, like, he should have been checking in on his daughter. So meanwhile, she ain't got no father to help or step in and save her while she's getting choked out by this man. And the door slammed on her face by his wife, you know, because he's just so into his new family. So when Uncle Clifford was saying these things like, where are the good fathers? Where are the good men? It was really like, to me, a cry for help because the men really need to step up. And this is not, you know, some type of jab towards men because I know there's some really great men out there and they're the ones that they raise the good kids and and the people that give to this world they give something great to this world so we need more of those men because they're the ones that can help and rescue I mean they're the heads of the family they're not the freaking heads of the family for nothing you know I think there's a saying by uh Frederick Douglass that says if you change the uh, the man you can change the world the men are powerful and they're needed you know, so I really thought that that was, you know, just one piece that was so important of the narration that was going on in this story. All right, guys, so let's move on to the last scene. Didn't mean to start getting preachy or nothing like that, you know. <laughs> so we get to the last scene, guys, where Wody shows up to this freaking freak fest. Yo, I know this was not Jocelyn's party. Like, come on now. This was a whole orgy. Like, it was just crazy. So, you know, and so does Wody. Wody know, too, that. This dude, Rome, is a freaking cokehead. So he goes and he meets him to the back. Like, let me holler at you for a minute. He goes, talks to him and sits down. And he like, oh, I got that good stuff for you, you know? So I already knew this daggone thing had to be laced. You know, we already know this dude is a freaking mortician and everything. He knows about different things. He knows about chemicals and all that. So this freaking guy lays it out for Rome. And Rome was like, you know, excited at first. But then he was like, you know what? No, you take, you take a line. Go ahead. You first. 
So we see that Wody, he goes for like the third line, a line that was already there and everything is all good. But this dude, he sniffs, he snorts some uh, Rome and then he does some more. You can see he gets a little greedy, you know, and things start to happen and he starts to get a little, you know, lightheaded and dizzy and everything. But the whole time, Wody is also talking to him and saying, you know, what's going, what's going to happen with a uh, little murder and the tour and all of this stuff and Rome was like well I'll get one of my artists in Lil murder could open up for him so he was already showing Wody that he was not about to look out for murder at all which Wody already knew which was the reason why he came with the freaking laced uh coke okay <laughs> so as this dude is pretty much dying he's explaining everything to him right Wody is explaining everything he said you know you're lucky because most people don't get a person there with them to guide them to the other side, you know. And he started asking him, have you ever seen anybody die, this and that? And what? And Rome was like, you know, I saw my mama die and all of this, right? But anyway, guys, long story short, he's basically letting Rome know that you is about to die, brother. And, you know, all I wanted to know was where was this dude going to wink, guys? I said to my um my son and my family, we was watching it together, and I was like, did he ever get winked at when they was playing that killer game? And I don't remember Rome ever getting winked at. And I was like, oh, if he didn't get winked at, yo, Wody has to wink at him. And when he freaking winked, I was hollering and I freaking clapped because I was like, yo, that scene, that was a dope freaking scene, all right? Just... The fact that they was doing this whole little killer game this whole time and then the freaking game turned real and this dude still winked at a ninja. I was like, yes. So also I forgot to mention that this dude, Wody, he mixed fentanyl. Well, he laced fentanyl with the cocaine and fentanyl is used for like um, severe pain and stuff like that. But if it's taken with alcohol, drugs like cocaine and heroin, it can bring about death, all right? So the way this guy, especially because he kept snorting and snorting, it obviously enhanced it and it helped to just bring on that death for sure, all right? Because this dude, he was putting it all in his teeth. He snorted like, what, two to three lines? Like, he was he was doing the most. And I think that because Wody knew that he would get down like that with it, he already knew that that fentanyl was going to work. Listen, this MVP is going to Wody, okay? This is somebody that's like a character that's kind of like on the sidelines. You know, he's he's there, but he's not that important. But he stepped up in such a big way and played such a key role just now when he came in and he took out Rome, all right? Who knew that he was going to escalate this whole situation to freaking murder? And then we see in the preview for next week's episode he lets Lil murder know that he gets things done like don't sleep on me just because i'm not a part of that life that gangster life don't mean that i don't get things done okay but he winked and said night night nigga and i was like oh yes <laughs> so then we get uncle clifford continuing with his narration and he letting it be known like this is not no fairy tale okay and he sums it up listen handsome princes can become fire-breathing dragons and trusty sidekicks can become the angel of death which Wody just became but then lastly she said even damsels can become their own saviors now I'm hoping that that damsel that will become her own savior will be Keyshawn because we already know that the prince that became the fire-breathing dragon is Zarek all right so what's gonna happen with this chick is she gonna save herself because she sure don't want to be saved at this point okay but anyway guys as this was being narrated to us we get freaking Wody coming out winking and i was like bro don't wink at me shoot i'm not a part of that game all right and me and my son was over here talking about i bet you there's people that was actually playing too that freaking fell out and everything i said they sure probably did but don't even put that game over this way okay 
anyway guys that was the episode let me know what you guys thought about this episode i thought it was a really really good episode i wasn't sure uh what to think i was interested in her backstory but i didn't think that this episode was gonna be this freaking good guys all right but let me know what you guys thought make sure you like comment and subscribe if you haven't already hit that notification bell so you know when i upload more videos like this one and until next time you guys take care and be blessed and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye